YouTube never fails to amaze me sometimes. Remember uh, a few videos ago, or maybe it wasn't the last video, I know I did a few Wind Waker videos since then, but at one point I talked about 40 subscribers mysteriously vanishing. Well, they came back out of nowhere for no apparent reason. Though analytics t tells me that I still lost 400 subscribers at once, apparently I lost nothing, so... Yeah, what in the hell is going on? Ah, oh, then again, it's YouTube. They can't ever seem to keep their shit straight in any area of, uh, you know, managing their site and all that. Uh, and yeah, I was supposed to talk about Chandelure today. Chandelure, one of the most anticipated Pokemon uh, when this game first came out. People really wanted to try it out because of that massive 145 special attack. Never mind the fact that it's rather frail and Will-O-Wisp TM talking of fire. Well, Will-O-Wisp is a move I can't really imagine a Chandelure using. But, um, I think I might use it on my Jellicent when I get it soon enough. Don't worry, my team is going to be expanded eventually. Some people really aren't ha used to having three team members at the 6th gym. But hey, that's how I roll. I pick my Pokémon, and then I go with only them, no matter how long it takes, and... Wow! Getting a lot of random battles here on these stairs. But yeah, I haven't decided whether I would use Will-O-Wisp or Blizzard on Jellicent. Recover, Surf, and Shadow Ball are absolute certainties. I'm going to use that Yamask I caught earlier to breed Shadow Ball onto uh, a Frillish. But uh, for that last spot, I still haven't decided I might do it, you know, when I reach Ice Cirrus, which is when Blizzard is going to become available to me anyway. Can't use Ice Beam because that TM comes much later into the game, and Jellicent will already have been dismissed by then. So yeah, Chandelure. Frail Pokémon, very powerful, but unfortunately, its speed just is not very good, considering that it will have to take it sooner or later, and unfortunately, that's something Chandelure doesn't do too well, as do most fire types, admittedly, but still, those low defenses really don't help, and... Oh wow, this is actually pretty cool! We got a psychic whose name is Bell, which happens to be Bianca's Japanese name, and she's got a Musharna! Now, guess who's using a Musharna? Yeah! I don't think that was intentional, but still, pretty cool. And this Musharna just survived an Excisor from an Excadrill, despite having an 11 level ad disadvantage. Man, that thing is bulky! Too bad it's still shit, though. But, um, yeah, if I can start talking about Chandelure, the biggest problem with Chandelure is that its Dream World ability, which is Shadow Tag, still isn't available to it. Uh, Black and White 2 brought uh, with it most of the Generation 5 Dream World abilities, but they decided not to give uh, Chandelure its own. Maybe... I don't know if it's because of, um, well, not exactly randomness, but uh, I don't know if it was a conscious decision to not give it a shadow tag because it might break the game then, but it's definitely helping to keep the metagame balanced. I mean, I don't think I've heard uh, too many people cry out over a certain Pokémon for being broken, uh, which is why Smogon is focusing on Garchomp these days, I would imagine, because Black and White really was sort of a disappointment in terms of uh, really making Pokémon nearly all-powerful. Uh, like, you know, Platinum did with Scizor, for example. <laughs> but, uh, nonetheless, uh, I don't know if it's a conscious decision or not, but if it is, I wish that they had used that kind of foresight with Politoed and Ninetales when uh, the Dream World first came out, because if we didn't have Drizzle, Politoed, and Drought Ninetales, we would have such a different metagame, it wouldn't even be funny, and... Call me crazy, but we wouldn't have had to ban nearly as much stuff if it, if it, were, if it weren't for better, for uh, permanent weather. I mean, Excadrill and possibly Garchomp might have still been gone because of Tyranitar and Hippowdon, 
but stuff like Incarnate Thunderous or Blaziken, stuff like that, uh, they would probably still be among us, as well as, uh, you know, Swift Swimmers, which have restrictions on using them on the overused ladder. And I still can't <laughs> bring myself to talk about Chandelure! Damn, ADD much? But, um, seriously, if I can just keep talking about Chandelure for a minute, uh, the fact it, it's really powerful offensively, but the fact that it's slow and frail really doesn't help it. It's not even overused, though it is a very strong underused Pokémon, and it's also very used uh, uh, on the Dream World ladder, obviously. But overall, its main draw is Shadow Tag, which it d doesn't have yet, so if you want a really powerful fire type uh, that that's uh, you know a special attacker, Volcarona would probably be your best bet. Even though it takes a lot more damage from Stealth Rock, it's still in general a much superior Pokemon. Though uh, it's not to say that Chandelure doesn't have its charms. Like for example, it ha it still has access to Flash Fire, which is a pretty cool ability. It makes it immune to. Uh, to, to, to fire on top of normal and fighting, so you can use those immunities to your advantage if um, if you can find an opportunity to do so. Such an opportunity comes in uh, the Glitchmon metagame that I was talking about earlier, because uh, Ursa Ring's big moves are Fake Out, Extreme Speed, and also V Create, and Chandelure is immune to all these. Now, um, I don't think you can use uh, you can use Shadow Tag because it's never been released in the Glitchmon metagame either. But uh, still, Flash Fire gives it a pretty good niche despite being a Generation 5 Pokemon which instantly screws it over because it doesn't have access to nearly as many moves as Pokemon from the first four generations. And actually, pretty good timing on that nurse, because I was stupid and I didn't go back to heal between videos. So, um, yeah, this is actually a nice way of covering up for my mistake. So, Black and White 2 are going to have their international release very soon. And uh, one thing that I'm sort of looking forward to is the fact that they're actually adding achievements into the series. Well, they're called medals in the game, but I'm just going to refer to them as achievements because, seriously, that's what they are, achievements. Now, most of them are pretty easy, though if you uh, look closely at the list of achievements, there, uh, it, there are several achievements that are really interesting and really are going to force you to... Uh, really play uh, well, as well as dedicate yourself to uh, training your Pokémon, unless you want to cheat, then I guess that's fine too, but there's no merit in getting an, ach in an achievement if you cheated to get it. Uh, those achievements are beating the Elite Four with um, a team that's all of the same type, and there are 17 achievements of this category, one for each type. So, I know uh, some people are going to train uh, 17 teams of 6, well maybe there's going to be some overlap due to dual types and all, but I already know that some people will be hunting down those achievements, and it's going to take real dedication, because it means that you're going to have to raise uh, several dozen Pokémon to level like 80, because, well, you can only fight the first round of the Elite Four ones, and I don't think anyone's gonna go in there with a mono with a monotype team or attempt the solo run achievement on that on that first run either. That's going to wait until the post game when you uh, have access to all the training opportunities for your Pokemon. So yeah, as I was saying, there's also um, there's also an achievement for performing a solo run on the Elite Four, beating the. I was about to say who the champion was, I'm not gonna say it just in case you don't want to be spoiled, because trust me, when I saw who it was, my jaw sort of dropped, uh, but then again, I already said that several times, but yeah, um, so, little, a little challenge, I don't have any prizes to give out or anything, but, uh, a little challenge, 
try to make a solo run of the of the second round of the Elite Four in Black and White 2 with uh, uh, with one Pokemon and preferably the weakest Pokemon that you can imagine. I would like to see how how much players can really squeeze the lemon, get all its juice, and just go for the weakest possible Pokemon that can still defeat the Elite Four in one go. Items are allowed, of course, because I think uh, I think even using an Arceus, it would be nearly impossible to uh, perform a solo run without items. And now, watch and be amazed as I proceed to read what's in your mind right now. Yes, you can use Torterra for this. In fact, bonus points for you if you use Torterra. Oh, come on. You really thought I was going to talk about solo runs and not bring Torterra? Who do you think I am? What amateur hour lp -er do you think I am? So, um, I think there's an item uh, to the left of that trainer. I'm gonna go and check, and yeah, I was right. I don't know why I remembered that. Well, maybe it, it's partly remembering that from previous playthroughs, and also the fact that it was that it would seem to be a pretty good place to hide an item anyway, because uh, from uh, from certain angles the tombstones hide it, but not from certain other angles. So, Shadow Claw TM. We're getting a lot of TMs lately. Shadow Claw, pretty much the best uh, physical ghost move in terms of pure power, not uh, counting Shadow Force with only Giratina, Smeargle, and uh, Arceus have. And hey, look! It's the second most promiscuous character we've met this week. Which begs the question, would she do it with a Moblin? And yes, we came all the way out here for nothing. She already took care of the injured Pokemon for us. Then again, I guess it's... I don't know if it's the, the story's way of trying to get us uh, to score some extra brownie points with Skyla or anything. Oh, yes, and she's going to make me ring the bell. Now look at the bell, if you will, once the dialogue uh, box disappears. Because we saw it a couple times already. It's Lean's Bell from Chrono Trigger. They knew what they were doing when they put that song there. It looks like someone at Game Freak really loves Chrono Trigger, and I couldn't blame them, really. There really aren't... They really don't make games like that very much anymore, especially not coming out of Square Enix themselves. At least the bell didn't, didn't ring like Lean's Bell at the very least. You knew a massive freakout was incoming if they even ripped off that sound effect. So, Skyla, the leader of the Mile High Club of Mr. Alton. So, uh, that means that now that we've taken care of the Celestial Tower, our next step is to go and tackle the Mile High Club. But first, we're going to do something else, because uh, the month of September is coming to an end, and I still haven't covered that trainer at the Ferris Wheel. Uh, during the spring season, so I would like to to do so before the um, before the season ends. So I'm going to head back to Nimbasa and uh, fight that trainer next time. And then once that's done, we can go back to Mr. Alton and fight Skyla. So I guess on that note, there's nothing much else I have to say except we'll see you next time. <laughs>